G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. I'm going to do a series where I go back and have a look at uh, models I made before YouTube. Yes, and then I might even come into some models that I've made even while I was on YouTube and I might have been sick or I might have just not bothered putting them up. You know, up. I didn't have a full series on them. I'm going to expose myself to you. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to show you things you haven't seen before. And it's an easy way for me to make a few videos so that there's always something here for you to look at on my channel. There might even be some banjo playing games. Like, don't tune out, don't tune out. Sorry, Bernard, no banjo on this one. Anyhow, let me take you back to, oh, it was quite a few years ago, four or five years ago when I came back to the hobby and I'd been building the grass bay and having a ball with that and I built the war spike before it and I was getting back into my ships because that's what I did pretty well when I left the hobby 50 years ago as I was building ships and having a war, you know, way over time. Built lots of built everything Airfix had in their catalogue at the time. Plus a whole lot of other ones, whatever I get my hands on. Um, so there I was, 50 years later, I decided I'm going to do the modelling again. And of course I bought ships again. But I got bogged down with the grass bay because I bought every bloody piece of known PE and metal barrels and wood deck to it. And it was sort of a bit much uh, for me to chew off coming back into the hobby. So I decided I needed a bit of a break and I decided to build a tank. So I went down to my local hobby store. I had a route around the shelves and I found this. It was on special for about three or four shekels. It wasn't much, it wasn't much at all. And um, I decided that looks fun. That's a nice big box, that's pretty good value. You know, it was much less than what I'd paid for my battleship. I thought I'll give this a try, see how it goes. Now, I, out of the blue, because I didn't do any research, I just grabbed it because it looked nice, it was on special. I lucked on to basically, this is a cyber hobby, but it's a dragon kit. And so this opened up a whole world of fun and challenge that Dragon is for me. But I really enjoyed the build. It was new, it was different, it was a subject that I'd only, well I don't even built two tanks as a kid. I built a Tiger and a Sherman. And I don't know what scales they were because we had the Airfix soldiers, my brother and I, we used to play war games as soldiers. And we decided to make up a bit of board game for it. We needed some tanks, so Dad got us a couple of tanks and we had a Sherman for the British infantry, and we had a, um, a Tiger one for the Germans, and um, I think they were all, I remember the Tiger being a lot bigger than the Sherman, so maybe that was, they were different scars, who knows, but anyhow, they were the only tanks that I ever built, and we just built them out of a box, that was it, don't think we bothered painting them, painted up all the soldiers, so, for our little war coming, so anyhow, I had very little experience with armour, I'd been building my ships, I had a lot of knowledge about scale modelling and what to do, especially I built a lot of aeroplanes, I built a lot of wooden boats and then a lot of um, control line planes. So I had a lot of knowledge about how things went together and how to build things and how to do a, a bit of weathering, a bit of affecting, that sort of thing. But I didn't know all the ins and outs of armour. So this was my foray into that whole field that then ended up with me doing something like this, which was the Academy Hetzer that won me model of the year. That was only like a few two, three years later that I'd gone from that. I'm a fast learner. <laughs> and it's kind of stuff I knew, but I just built on knowledge. And I've also got a bit of skill. And, and quite frankly, I arse it in. Anyway, enough waffling about all that. Let's have a look at what I did to take this box into a reasonable kit. I won't say it's the best model I ever made. It's not bad. But I did a lot of stuff with it, and I had a lot of fun. And as you'll see in the video now, the slideshow, I uh, went through a process of learning and enjoyment and it got me into armour thinking, gee, this stuff's not bad, all right? But here we go. Here's my build of the Kugel Blitz, which I think translates to ball of fire or great balls of fire or my balls are on fire, something like that. Kit started with the wheels, which I really enjoyed. There's something very satisfying about making something round and making sure it's round. And I really enjoyed that. I put all the wheels together and I painted them. I'd actually pre-painted all the parts in the kit. I sprayed them with Tamiya Rattle Can, um, that sort of dark yellow colour, because I knew that's the colour I wanted to do it. So they were already sort of pre-painted. I knew I'd have to touch it up, but that didn't matter. Um, the tools, had a lot of fun with those, detailing up all the tools, doing all the metal effects. These are all skills I already had, things I already knew. So it was just it was good applying them to something really different. And here I sort of test fitted the tools on the body and I'd already tried to do a little bit of weathering and it was starting to come together. It was really easy. I was having a ball. There was really nothing that was challenging me or that was too difficult at this stage with the kit. And um, 
did try a bit of weathering there around the um, the vents and then along came the magic tracks. Yes, I was a bit trepidatious about this and I put them off for quite some time. But then as I say, I studied and studied and I found all the different ways online of how to do it and from that I distilled my own version and that's what I ended up with. I managed to work out a way to easily make the tracks and get the sag. And that's now been my basically patented method, have a Harry Houdini method, of doing track links. I also started to learn how to weather them. That was my first attempt. It's not the best. But the tanks started coming together and I was really happy with the results and they were achieved fairly quickly. Now this is the thing that I really liked about this Kugel Blitz is this business with the, the barrels. They go right up and over. It's hilarious. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. So she came together fairly nicely but I hadn't done much weathering on it. I messed around with the track links and got a bit of, um, you know, tried to get a bit of an effect on them but it wasn't convincing as I wanted. I came back to them later. But that's where I got and I was quite happy with the result. It was easy to do. I think it only took me about a month to build. And, and you know, I put the transfers on it. I'm not saying decals ever again. Water transfers on it. But those barrels, right? Those barrels really annoyed me. And I thought, hmm, something had been done. So I bought these aftermarket ones. They were for flat pans, but not this particular one. And look how different they made the tank look. I love those barrels. And look, quite frankly, it could have got them. They were the right calibre. They were for another flat panzer. And... They look great on the Kugelblitz. So here's some photos now of how she looked after I'd finished her at this stage. Well, there you go. What did you think of that? It wasn't a bad build, was it? It was a lot of fun. I mean, I learnt so many things, you know. I did magic tracks the first time and developed my own track technique, um, how to put the links together and how to basically get sag around the, um, the wheels. Um, I looked at so many videos of every, what everyone else is doing. There was a lot of good examples, a lot of good ways to do it. And I pinched a lot and I amalgamated together and then I tried my own method. Worked first time, so I stuck with it. And that's the one I've shared over and over again as what I think is one of the easiest ways and most reliable ways of putting track links on a armored vehicle. And I did it first time. Again, I asked it in. There's a lot of asking around in my bloody uh, my modeling and my life too. I'm a lucky bastard. Oh yeah. Number of times I've fallen to shit and come up smelling like a penguin. Uh, but enough of that. Right. Um, I should have said warm that. Be more appropriate, wouldn't it? Anyhow, Google friggin' Blitz, right? Yeah, it's great balls of fire. <laughs> I, I love this thing. It is, um, it's so weird. And I really like those barrels that I put on it, which, um, which do it justice, because the, the barrels in the kit and the barrels you saw in the prototypes, they're crap. <laughs> this thing, you know, this thing's quite magnificent. It needs some great big barrels with some trumpets on the top there. Da -da -da -da. That's what it's got, and that's what mine's got. And I love the way the um, the track goes right over, and it can shoot behind it, right? So, you know, it's just terrific. And of course, you know, it, it also rotates. But yeah, this... Um, this, this business just amuses me. <laughs> I just love that. And that's, that's the Google Blitz Hitch. So it probably would have been a very formidable vehicle had it really got into production and, uh, and use. But at the, uh, at the end of the war there, the Hrmans were kind of running out of money and uh, basically resources and just about everything, you know? So it was all, all a bit too sad and a bit too late. But then again, we wanted to win, didn't we? Sometimes I side with Germans, I know. I just love all this stuff. This is the trouble. Now the um, the Germans and the Italians and Japanese, brilliant machines. I love all their machines. That's what I really enjoy. I, do. I model mostly all of their stuff because their stuff to me is a lot of a lot more interesting. Just 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 me. But I mean, I do like a video. I like a speed. You know, <laughs> always like a Spitfire. But gee, some of the German planes were so interesting. You know, the technology and and their armor and their ships, just fantastic. All right, well, enough of that. Enough of my love of the rims. Yes, hopefully that'll uh, stop them complaining. They often get upset with my videos. Don't ever seem to hear me, you bastards. <laughs> well, you do. You do. You must. You must chuckle silently to my jokes. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a bit funny, but we won't say anything. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, now I've upset all my bloody viewers. Look, I'll uh, bit of piss off. Well, there you go. So um, that's the bill of the Kugelbits. It's not exactly the best piece of armour I did, but it sort of marks a point where I changed subject and I had to go at something different. And 
the point for me and the point I'm probably trying to share with you is don't be afraid to go outside of the subjects you normally build. Try something unusual. I mean, you might hate it, you might think it's horrible, but quite frankly, that rarely happens. You would have a skill set anyway if you're building planes or you're building ships or you know, you're building bloody robots, God knows what. But if you then try something a bit unusual, I mean, pick a kit that's not a real nightmare. Like, don't jump into an Arizona if you've never built a boat before. <laughs> well, yes. Enough of that. We don't mention the A word around here. But look, a change of subject and something different to get you out of your comfort zone, well, it tests your mettle and it also, you can get new skills. And as I found when I bought my first tank, boy, that was just so much fun. And then I bought a whole stack of them and then I ended up winning an award for, um, for my headset. So how about that? There you go. I'm not promising. We do not promise that everyone will win an award if they change their subject. No. Just saying. Have some fun. Enjoy your Merlin. Now look, just fuck off and stop watching YouTube. Go build a model. <laughs> but first, watch a couple of pictures. I'll end this video with a couple of little pictures I took when I was doing actually a video on lighting, which I'm going to do a new version of. I'm going to do a part three of the lighting. A lot of people ask me to do that. So um, here's the Google Blitz looking a bit prettier. And you can bugger off and do some modelling. And I'll say goodbye from Australia. And it's Harry from Harry and Eddie.